Here's the AC adapter for this generic uh, external USB hard drive. I uh, went back, looked in the box, and it was right there. I did not find the plug that uh, goes to the uh, outlet, but I have one of those already. The one from my printer fits perfectly. It's a generic Chinese power supply. Man, this is a pretty uh, dodgy looking thing. It is in fact a dual output, 12 volts and 5 volts. And it gives the pin out there, which is uh, uh, quite nice. So, let's uh, plug this thing in and see what this thing does. If this works at all, great. Uh, if it doesn't work, my first assumption would be that the power supply is no good. My second assumption would be that the electronics in the enclosure are bad, but uh, let's find out. Alright, it's plugged in. Let's uh, plug this thing in and hope it doesn't blow up because I'm on a bed. And on. Oh. That doesn't seem right. Does it? Oh! There's the hard drive. Sounds like it passed the seek test. Must have been one of the voltages just wasn't hooking up. That's why it was blinking like that. Well, the hard drive spun up and it's running and it passed the seek test. Uh, yeah, I get to get it's a Type A USB cable, so I get to haul that off my printer too. See if this thing works. That'll be sweet if it does, man. I could use something like this. Cause I get all those old hard drives. This would be useful to uh, play around with them. Use them as a port. Use them as a uh, portable storage. USBs in. Blue light went out. Windows is installing. Oh, hard drive just shut off. I don't know if that's a good thing. Oh, it says it installed. Oh, uh, there it goes again. Maybe it's a power save thing. It's not showing up in my computer. Oh, let me try uh, going to disk management. Ugh. Yeah, something's going on there. Power keeps cutting out. Okay, it's doing normal stuff. Ah, spare. 40 gigabyte NTFS. Is it actually, oh yeah. Now the computer's acting like it can't connect to it. It seems to be connecting sporadically. Perhaps it's something simple, maybe the IDE cable inside is cutting out, I don't know. Oh, I got into it and it's got personal information on it. Once again, people who don't know how to properly dispose of computer stuff. Well, I'm not going to delve into this stuff. I have no interest in getting my nose in other people's information, but uh, I will just look at dates just to see. Like, there's a... Yeah, just cut out again. Like, there's picture, let's see, 2009. So yeah, I've checked it out. It's just a, lots of pictures from 2008 and 2009. Uh, yeah, <laughs> about uh, 18 gigabytes worth. So, let's uh, format this thing. I'll uh, I'll just completely delete the uh, partition. There we go. And make a new one. Quick format. And format. That drive appears to work just fine. That's sweet. Now this this is great. Like my vintage IDE hard drives, like my friggin' 120 megabyte Quantum Pro drive. Man, I would slap that drive in this thing, use it as a USB drive, that would be absolutely sweet. Most ghetto, uh, most ghetto USB hard uh, storage device ever. And it formatted. Sweet. Let's, uh, yeah, we can open it up. Let me transfer something to it. Do -do -do. Oh, what's this? Your device is ready to use. USB mass storage device. So yeah, I have no idea who made this thing. It appears to be some stupid generic thing. Maybe it didn't even originally come with a drive. Maybe it was one of those kits that you buy and you would BYOD, bring your own drive. I don't know. It appears to work perfect. It was kind of glitchy at first. Maybe it'll act glitchy again. I don't know. Hopefully it doesn't. Well, someday I'll put this drive through a uh, spin right to check the uh, surface for errors, 
see if make sure the drive doesn't have any physical damage. Uh, let me try turning it off and turn it back on, see if it glitches out. Oh, yeah. Maybe it's the power supply. Because it seems to struggle when it spins. <laughs> it seems to struggle when it spins up. Maybe the power supply is not providing enough power. The drive requires 0.8 amps on the 12 volt side and 0.65 amps on the 5 volt side. The power supply, uh, assuming it's actually healthy, is able to supply 2 amps. So yeah, I'll have to uh, I'll have to test the power supply and see if it's actually putting out good voltage. I looked on some of the chips. Date code is 2004, so this thing was made during the height of the capacitor plague which means that power supply could have bad capacitors in it and I can't check without destroying it because it's uh, sealed shut like a lot of uh, AC adapters are so I don't know what to do about this thing but uh, yeah it's working perfectly right now so uh, what I'll do for now is I will I'll check the surface of the drive for errors and uh, yeah I guess if it keeps working fine like it is right now I'll use it I'll, uh, I, I, I definitely, absolutely want to put my oldest IDE hard drive in this thing, my 120 megabyte Quantum Pro drive. That would be so ghetto, and I would use it like that. That'd be sweet. So there you go. There's the uh, generic external data storage USB hard drive and FireWire. It's got FireWire too, which is sweet. From 2004, appears to work just perfect. Sweet. Okay, it is a year later. Seriously, uh, the video you just watched was filmed in January of 2015, and I'm just getting to it now. I've got it open in my video editor here, and I've got all the stuff I filmed in January 2015 all done. Uh, here's the story on what happened to that hard drive enclosure. It never did stop acting really glitchy with the whole power cutting in and out. So I ended up throwing it away. I threw the enclosure away. I threw the power supply away. I think the only thing I kept was that short little IDE cable in case I ever had a use for that. I threw the rest of it away. Oh, and except the drive too. Yeah, I kept the that MaxTor Slimline hard drive. It turned out to be a 100% healthy drive, so I saved it, and I'm actually using it in one of my older computers now. Sweet, can't go wrong there. But here's the really sad part. I did something really, really stupid, which ended up costing me uh, one of my favorite vintage IDE hard drives. Um, I wanted to try a drive with lower power consumption to see if, if it actually was current draw issues, the power supply not being able to supply enough current, hence the voltage dropping and the drive cutting in and out. So I tried one of my vintage hard drives that is particularly miserly on power, and that was my Western Digital Caviar 1210, 210 megabyte IDE drive from 1994. I tried that drive in the enclosure and it actually worked very well. It worked just fine and it, the power actually didn't cut in and out on it anymore. So I played with the enclosure a bit for a half an hour or so with that drive in it and it worked just fine. And then I turned it off for a while. And uh... Later, I went to turn it back on again, click of death, just, not just straight click of death, that's all that drive did, and that was just it. The drive, my, one of my favorite vintage hard drives, my Caviar 1210, completely dead now. have no idea what happened between it working perfectly when I tried it in the enclosure the first time, and then now it's completely dead. When you turn it on, it spins up, and then afterwards, it just forever whack, 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 whack. It whams the heads up against the park position. And it, it's not even recognized by the BIOS anymore. When I put it in a computer, the BIOS doesn't even detect it. The drive has completely died. The only sign of life it shows now is that it does spin up to the correct speed, and then it just infinitely gives a very loud click of death. I'm really... It, it happened a year ago, but I'm still really upset. That was one of my favorite vintage hard drives. And I'm, I'm so stupid for trying 
one of my favorite vintage hard drives in this cheap, generic Chinese drive enclosure. And I feel even stupider because throughout this video which you just watched, you heard me say, oh man, I want to tr put one of my vintage hard drives in it and use it as, you know, a ghetto USB storage. No, that's a terrible idea. I should never trust a cheap generic hard drive enclosure to a vintage hard drive. Oh man, I can't believe I ever thought that was a good idea. Well, I learned my lesson. One of my favorite hard drives is dead now. I still have the drive. I, I still do physically have it. What I've done since then is, and this is what prompted me to finally finish this video a year later, I was thinking about that hard drive and um, I asked someone on YouTube about it, someone else who's, who likes collecting vintage hard drives, and they said that um, early Western Digital IDE hard drives, the early caviars, are particularly sensitive to power supply voltage. If the voltage is too high or too low, it'll cause the firmware to corrupt on them. This is what this person said. And that seemed kind of logical to me. So just recently, I asked on the uh, the Vintage Computer Forums, which is at a new URL now. It's vcfed.org. And I asked the Vintage Computer Forum. I told them the whole story. And I've gotten quite a few responses. And basically, the consensus from these guys is that the drive probably doesn't even have firmware in the tra in the traditional sense. Um, apparently, a lot of IDE hard drives, most IDE hard drives, st store their firmware on the drive itself, not in ROM on the circuit board. Because, see, the reason I've kept the drive all this time was I thought, well, maybe someday I'll get another one, perhaps a drive that is physically bad but still has a good circuit board, and I can transplant the circuit board over and revive my drive, since my drive was mechanically 100% perfect. Um, but yeah, these guys have been telling me that the firmware is probably on the drive itself, and probably uh, the servo tra either the servo track or uh, wherever the firmware is stored on the drive has gone bad. The drive itself has gone bad, and the parts of the drive that stores that critical data has gone bad, rendering the drive useless. This is what they've said. Um, that may be true. Perhaps the drive has its firmware stored on the disk itself, but I have a hard... Their consensus is it just... The, the enclosure probably didn't do anything. The drive just coincidentally went bad. I don't buy that because I've had that drive for four or five years. I used it off and on in computers all that time. And, you know, it was one of, it was one of my favorite vintage hard drives, so I usually ran it every few months. It always worked perfect, never had a problem. I ran it in old computers. I ran it in new computers. It was just a very healthy and beautiful drive. I have a hard time believing that half an hour of running in a cheap, generic, crappy Chinese USB enclosure didn't do something to it. I do not believe that it just coincidentally failed. I think that enclosure did something to it. But anyway, that's what these guys uh, think, and that's what the person I spoke to on YouTube thinks. Either way, one of my favorite vintage hard drives is dead now. My, my caviar. Oh, it still makes me mad, but I still have the drive. I think someday, I think I'll keep it around in case someday I do get um, another one. And I'll try transplanting the drive over, uh, the circuit board over. With that being said, if any of you guys watching has a Western Digital Caviar 1210, um, that's in poor shape but has a good circuit board, if you want to take the circuit board off, it's just a couple of connectors and some screws you have to remove, and mail me the circuit board, see if it actually does revive my drive, <laughs> sure, I'd be game for that. But anyway, that's the story with uh, that enclosure. It's garbage now. My poor caviar. I've still got it, though. And uh, there you go. Don't trust junk Chinese uh, hard drive enclosures.